I'm seeing Mr. Eugene oftentimes says they've offered laser. Uh, so get comfortable and welcome this morning. I said we could put up the next slide. Uh, an interesting announcement for you. A long, long time ago on a Disney World vacation far away, uh, you'll see this clean shaven face. Little does he know that the church members have secretly devised a plan even more powerful than the first dreaded attempt to remove his beard. When completed, this ultimate weapon will spell certain doom for the small beard struggling to restore freedom to the galaxy. <laughs> save the beard or shave the beard. The fate of the beard is in your hands. They, they've got their shave checks. I've got my save check. Uh, so we'll, we'll set a timeline. We'll, we'll go for three more weeks. And in three weeks, uh, I will convene uh, with, with the empirical forces of the finance committee, and we'll find out what the memo line, where the where the numbers stand. <laughs> <laughs> and no, no, uh, I, I don't want to see any Bernie Madoff uh, money arranging here. It is, there better be dollars and bills to back up these these claims. So the, the money is in support of finishing up the new church website project. Uh, we've, we've had a number of donors get us the first step of the way to get the ball rolling on the project, and now we're just trying to come up with the, the remaining portion that's left. So if you would, as we come together this morning, stand and join us in singing our opening praise and worship song, Here I Am to Worship, the words we found on the screen over my shoulder for you.
God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together this morning. We ask that you be in this place of worship. We know that it's a gymnasium in disguise, but we also know that where two or more of us are together, you're going to come in here and you're going to light this place on fire for us, God. Be with us that, that you open our ears and we hear the message, that we sing these songs, and that we lift up your holy name and, and praise and worship, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our next praise and worship song this morning is going to be found on the screen for you. It's Blessed Be Your Name.
scripture that I'll be reading to you today, I'll be reading from the Common English Bible Translation. I'm going to be reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. On account of his vast mercy, he has given us new birth. You have been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You have a pure and enduring inheritance that cannot perish, an inheritance that is presently kept safe in heaven for you. Through this faithfulness, you are guarded by God's power so that you can receive the salvation he is ready to reveal in the last time. You now rejoice in this hope, even if it's necessary for you to be distressed for a short time by various trials. This is necessary so that your faith may be found genuine. Your faith is more valuable than gold, which will be destroyed even though it itself is tested by fire. Your genuine faith will result in praise, glory, and honor for you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've never seen him, you love him. Even though you don't see him now, you trust him and so rejoice with a glorious joy that is too much for words. You are receiving the goal of your faith, your salvation. Please bow. Lord, we thank you for the words found in the scripture this morning. We ask now that you use these scriptures, uh, that you use your servant, Brother Hank, and speak your message through him and to us, God. Open our ears and hearts that we may receive what it is that you're going to speak to us this morning. That's your son, Jesus, Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to ask you this morning, what is your idea of heaven? If you have an idea of heaven, or just what is heaven to you? What is it, Will? Well, we're going to have never-ending beards. <laughs> never-ending uh, beards? Duck lines. That duck you, lines. Never have to, you never have to brush them. Yeah. Uh, no spiders, no cobwebs. <laughs> and the ducks are always flying. Yeah, always flying. That's, that sounds like heaven. What about anybody else? Anybody else got an idea of heaven, what heaven is? Peace, love, and smile. I thought you were going to say peas, cornbread, and deer venison. That's heaven to me. Followed by some banana pudding. You know, we all have this idea and expectation of heaven, what heaven is. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. There was a couple that died and went to heaven and they stood before St. Peter. And St. Peter took them in. First thing that he showed them was their great big mansion. You know, when you go to heaven, you're going to get a mansion. Big mansion, big tall mansion, beautiful, ornate, gorgeous place. And the guy said... You know, I don't think that I can afford this place. I don't think that I've got enough money to, to pay the rent on this. And, and St. Peter said, shh, you don't have to worry about that. This is heaven. We don't pay for things up here. You know, he walked him on in and showed him table after table of food. You went to Chewy's the other night. It was probably a lot of good food. This guy had food after food after food. And the guy and his wife looked at each other and said, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to afford all the food here. You know, and so they walked on through, and St. Peter told them, look, don't worry about having to pay for this stuff. It's all free, this heaven. So they walked on behind the mansion, and behind the mansion, Will, was a good golf course. Long fairways, green willow trees, be more beautiful than any kind of golf course you'd find in Scotland or Ireland, the United States, Florida. And before the man could say anything, St. Peter said, shh, remember, this is heaven. There are no green fees here. This is all free. The old man looked at his wife and said, you know, if you hadn't made me eat so many bran muffins, I'd have been here 10 years ago. <laughs> ah, trying to roll on life. What is heaven to you? Now, I want to ask you a question. I want you to think about this just for a moment. Think about this. If Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, heaven awaits you. Heaven is waiting for you. Why is that so awesome? You know, in, in my 20 years of ministry, I've known some guys that have died, gone on and met Jesus, and Jesus said, I'm not through with you. I'm sending you back down for, for a little while. You ever heard of anybody had that kind of story, that kind of testimony? Yeah. What was their response to Jesus? Time and time and time and time again, what do they tell Jesus? I don't want to go back. Don't send me back. I'm here. I'm in heaven. I don't want to go back to that place. Well, they got a glimpse and they got a little taste of what heaven was like. They didn't want to come back here, which I do not blame them. But heaven awaits you. And according to uh, Peter, the Bible tells us 
that our heavenly inheritance is also part of our living hope. Our living hope. The Bible says in verse 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a not dying hope, but a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now hope here is defined as an expectation of good or a joyful and confident expectation. Now how many of us have expectations? Do you ever think that part of your hope involves expectations? What happens if we don't have the high expectations of our kids? Come on, teachers, what happens? If, if a parent doesn't have high expectations of their kids, and they don't perform, do they, as well as what they could? And, and if we don't have expectations of our wife, fellas, what happens? Now, they have expectations of us, and they don't mind sharing their expectations with us. Well, what happened, right? Well, do we have expectations of them? I want the clothes folded, the clothes ironed. I want my dinner at, at 6 o'clock. And she's going to tell you, there's a McDonald's down the road, and there's a hotel right behind it, right? That's what she's going to say, right? Well, we have to have expectations. What is your expectation of heaven? What is your hope? Do you have a confidence in that? Do you have a confidence that one day you're going to be in glory with, that, with God? You know, I'm convinced that the scariest holiday of all is not Halloween. It's not Easter. No, we celebrated the fact in February. For a guy, this is the scariest holiday. This is the scariest. About, why is it scary for guys? We procrastinate. <laughs> If you wait a week to get reservations at one of the few restaurants here in town to take your honey to a restaurant, what's going to happen? You'll be going to Ellen and hoping you can find some place there. It is the scariest thing for guys because guys have to go out and they have to search for that just right present to them. And it's got to look just right. It's got to smell just right. It, it might be jewelry. And then there's the expectation that she might have, you've got enough money to pay for whatever it is that she wants to put on her, her finger or whatever it is. One guy writes this. He says, it is bittersweet, Valentine's Day, because women love it and men fear it. Women love it because they hope against hope that the dormant section of the male brain that houses the romantic nature will miraculously come to life again. All of their romantic hopes rest upon this obscure holiday set in the depth of the winter. They wait in anticipation for a miracle of romance to occur. While women love Valentine's Day, men fear it. We fear it because we do not know what our dear lady wants on any given day of the year, much less this day. Why should they expect anything different from us on Valentine's Day? Yet they do. So we frantically try to meet expectations we cannot understand nor comprehend, and the stress of Valentine's Day overwhelms us as we try to pull off the impossible. We've got expectations of our holidays, don't we? We do. How many of us actually have expectations about heaven, though, as I said? A confident expectation that one day we will, our children will, our family will, be with God in glory, all made possible through Jesus Christ. Is that your hope? The Bible tells us that heaven's beyond our wildest imagination. So not only is it our living hope, it's also without blemish. There's nothing that is, has a blemish in heaven. Verse 4 says to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away. Heaven will be unblemished. Now, Hank, you mean that one day this perfect place will be out. Well, what's your perfect place right now? Everybody has a perfect place. I know where Josh's perfect place is. And I can tell you it's probably not made his perfect place. It's wherever he plays guitar. Where's he play guitar? That's his perfect place. Now, uh, Megan's will probably become somewhere you know, secluded in the back of the house somewhere. But where is your perfect place? 
Brother TB? It could be a mountain range. It might be the Colorado Rockies. You just feel good when you're there. It might be Chewy's in Austin. It might be in Tiger Stadium with the score up 35 to nothing against Alabama. Now that is heaven. That's heaven. It might be on the 50-yard line of the Superdome. It might be at your mama's kitchen table when she's preparing all this stuff. How many of you feel like Disney World is the perfect place? Hey, folks, it's the place where dreams are made. Yeah. That's what it is. To a kid, that's what it is. Sure. Maybe it's the perfect place because, because of the long lines. Yeah. You stand in, long, uh, in line longer at Disney than you will the DMV here in Lisbon. You know, you can be there for a long time. Maybe it's the perfect place because scores and scores and scores of children are at Disney and they're all running everywhere. I can tell you a few years ago we went to, with the Bryants for a week right after Easter. And as I'm walking through the crowd, and it's crowded, I don't know how many foreheads I got from my elbows of kids just going everywhere. I, be, I hit one little kid right in the temple. He looked up at me like, man, that hurt, you know. I thought he was going to give me a few words, but he didn't. He backed down. I'm glad for my sake. But anyway, maybe it's the heat of Disney World. You stand in heat to ride something that's going to last 45 seconds, you know. It could be walking if you like walking. Maybe it's motion sickness. You ever notice that the older you get, the more motion sickness you get? I can't get on a merry-go-round now without getting a little motion sickness. They've got this ride called Mission to Mars. Do not ride Mission to Mars. Eat and then go three hours later, or don't eat, and then go all day. But I would advise you not to go. And maybe all of this together is why dads are so grouchy at Disney World. What is the perfect place? Folks, I got you. I got I want to tell you that heaven really is the perfect place. I mean, if you watch the news lately, I don't know what news agency you watch or what group you watch, CNN, Fox News, Miss Gertrude loves Fox News. I don't know what you watch, but there won't be any of that in heaven. And I lie. There is one blemish in heaven. Can you tell me what they are? No. No? No. We've been made perfect in Jesus Christ. What's the blemish? The nail scars in the hands of King Jesus. That's, those are the only blemishes. Those are there only to remind us of the great prayers that you paid for you. So this heavenly inheritance is your confident hope. It is without blemish. And finally, folks, the Bible says you have a reservation. It's reserved. Verse 4, reserved in heaven for you. And this word reserved here means to take care of, to guard, or to keep for you. You have a reservation. I've done quite a few funerals. And every funeral, the funeral director will come in and he'll reserve a section of pews, usually to my left, everybody else's right. Four, five, six pews, depending on the size of the family. And they come in, those are that, those, those seats belong to them. Happens the same way at a, at a wedding. You know, there's a place reserved for the parents and the bride. Parents and husband. And the question I have for you this morning is do you have a reservation? Is your seat being saved in heaven? Because if you follow Jesus Christ, you do have a reservation. Amen? Amen. Who's got a reservation this morning? Amen. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we we can't wait to get to our heavenly heaven. We know that you have reserved us each a place. But Father, we also realize that there are some here that are not very confident about that reservation. We know that there may be somebody here that doubts, that is not confident, does not have that confidence. Father, we pray that you give them that confidence to know that one day they're going to be with you. The Bible tells us that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We call on your name. Father, reserve us each and every one of us a spot. In Jesus' name.
please, now we're going to do the, the circle thing. We're going to join hands together, the church family, uh, some of us as actual blood family, uh, but all of us as family in the blood of Christ this morning in our closing prayer. Please now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together this morning freely and free from persecution. I would just lift up praise and worship to you and be here in the, the awe and wonder of your presence, Lord. We ask that you fill us each with your message, that you inspire us all, make us all courageous and, and as brave as, uh, as, as your messengers that you have down at the Louisiana Women's Institute correctional facility this weekend, and that we may all go out through the rest of our days and the rest of our weeks and spread that message, even when we think we don't know the words to say, Lord. Be with us and guide us each day, God. Let us in your Son's name that we ask these things. Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Before we break it, I'm sorry, I'm willing. Remember Rose that has come a few times? 